Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Rick Videos, and I swear I feel better than I look. It's been quiet the whole day, right? And then the second I sit down to film, my neighbors decide, hey, let's have a karaoke party. Also, we are rolling with this uh, yellow background in very um, poor condition. I just figured this might be better for that um, precarious selfie stick book cell phone situation that I mentioned in my previous video, link down below. I do like the red one better, but this is more comfortable, so I hope you are partial to yellow. Today I bring you a hibernation TBR because everyone else is doing it and I am a sucker for a book list. Which is a terrible idea because I have been such a mood reader the last <laughs> weeks that I just can't fathom following a TBR. And yet here I am with a TBR. But this is why I did it as an extra video instead of taking the weekly slot because I don't want to be one of those channels that only uploads TBRs and never follows up on them. I've been that channel already, so I don't want to go back to those times. Let's get on with it. First, I want to finish the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I have already read this many times, both illustrated and not, but I started this reread after going to a John Williams music concert last year, I believe. And I was very into it, just like blasting John Williams and reading this. <laughs> I got like one third into it and just never continued, got distracted. I want to finish this reread so I can go on to read for the first time the illustrated editions of the second and third books. Then I have three books that I have already posted to my bookstagram as a three book April TBR. You can check that out down below. It's on my highlighted stories. The first one is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moschweg. And I think this is about a graduate student or someone who has just graduated and she decides to go a full year sleeping as much as she can. And it's supposed to be super interesting. I've heard nothing but great reviews and I think I'm going to love it. And it also feels like the ideal time to check this out. Then I have The Shakespeare Requirement by Julie Schumacher. This is a campus novel about a new director of the English department at a university whose ex-wife is sleeping with the dean, I think. So it's supposed to be a funny and insightful look into academy politics and how this chair navigates the situation of having a dean who basically already has a negative bias towards him. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Another campus related book, you know I, I love my campus novels, I actually wrote an entire blog entry about that so you can check that down below. This is a study of animal languages by Lindsay Stern and this is about a marriage where both parties I believe work in academia and they are shaken by the arrival of one of their parents who goes to live with them and then also one of them has an affair, I think, with a photographer or a new graduate student, something like that. I started reading this at a bookstore and just like the first section really grabbed me. The father, or actually the father-in-law of the narrator, says, all my life I've been waiting, first for school to end, then for my 20s, then for success. Marriage, children, etc. For them to leave, for their children. Then waiting became less conspicuous, waiting for the cry of boiled water, for the paper, for its spring. It took a mighty long time to understand that what I'd been waiting for wasn't each thing, actually, but the chance to wait for whatever came next. I omitted a bunch of descriptions. I just wanted to highlight that section. I was just completely floored and I needed to check this book out, so I'm very, very excited. Then I have Close Range, Brokeback Mountain and other stories. Amy Pruel is like a very important author that I've never read. And of course, yes, I got this edition because I love Brokeback Mountain and that is probably the story I'm going to read first. But I'm also very eager to read the other stories because I feel like her settings are not what I'm used to and I'm all for exploring other 
environments right now. Then I have a non-fiction book called Alice Waters and Chez the romantic, impractical, often eccentric, ultimately brilliant making of a food revolution by Thomas McNamee. This is exactly what it sounds like. It seems to be like a very entertaining and full of heart a story of how this woman decided that, hey, the US needed Parisian style cafes. I love any place where you can sit down and read and have a good cup of tea or coffee and something really nice to eat. That's just my natural environment and actually the thing I miss the most <laughs> from the outside world. So I'm very excited to check this out. And you know I've been loving my food memoirs, food writing. Then I have another non-fiction book, B6 Shakespeare by Emma Smith. I was so looking forward to getting this book. I thought I was going to read it right away when I got it, but then I kept waiting for that perfect moment and because I was still a student back then that never came. Now I feel like I have the brain power to really dive into this and this is basically an introduction I think on Shakespeare's like main play by Emma Smith who I became aware of because she did these hilarious videos in the I think Penguin yeah Penguin because this is a Pelican book platform where she talked about Shakespearean adaptations including Romeo and Juliet and Lion King she was so funny and approachable and smart she can make anyone excited about Shakespeare although I must admit I did not need that push because I already had a fabulous Shakespeare professor in college so I'm just very excited. Then I want to continue reading um, Favor and Favor, The Untold Story by Toby Favor. This is an oral history, or rather a letter history of Favor and Favor. Yes, the famous publisher. I adore Favor and Favor. So I got this as soon as it came out and I started reading it and it kind of picked it up and read a couple of pages every time I felt like I needed it, but now I really want to read it back to back. Toby Favor has also written books on Stravinsky and Fabergé X, which I also want to read, and he's a wonderful writer. He j doesn't just copy and paste the uh, letters, he comments on them and provides a bit of context. Then I have Because Internet by Gretchen McCullough, Understanding the New Rules of Language. I have been a super fan of Lingthusiasm, a podcast about language, link down below as always, since I discovered it a couple of years ago. I've been listening to the whole process of this book because Gretchen McCullough talks a lot about it in her podcast. She's amazing. I love what she does with linguistics and I've heard excellent things about this book that delved into internet language. In case you've forgotten, apart from literature, I've also studied linguistics in college, so right up my alley. Then I have Lincoln in the Bardo by uh, George Sounder, of course. This already has a bookmark. I've mentioned a couple of times that it was not what I was expecting at first, but since then I already, of course, know what this is about and would love to read it and this is basically Abraham Lincoln going to his son's grave. It's a multi-voiced novel where all these spirits rise and discuss Lincoln. I really want to read this. I can't believe I haven't read it yet. I have a new were acquisition and this is In the Land of Men by Adrian Miller. Between 1997 and 2006, Adrian Miller was a literary editor of Esquire magazine, which was basically male-dominated, both in the staff and the writers they published. Whilst there, she made friends and also dated David Foster Wallace. And this memoir is her time working there in Esquire, but also her relationship with David Foster Wallace. So I mean, how could I not pick this up? We're almost there, I promise. Then I... <laughs> I also want to read The Friend by Sigrid Nunes. This has been highly recommended by everyone basically, but most notably by So Many Dumb Books podcast, which I've taken to listen to lately. And yes, they recommended this when it first came out. But I really enjoy consuming the backlist episodes first of anything that I'm getting into. One of my best friends also read it and loved it. And it's supposed to be super interesting and bookish. So really, how can I go wrong with this book about a woman who has lost a dear friend and is taking care of this friend's 
dog and thinking about books and writing and literature. I also finally hope to get to The Beautiful and Damp by Fitzgerald. I have been craving Fitzgerald like crazy these days. I've been told this is his more bookish novel and also it's his more decadent novel. All things I'm craving at the moment. I want to of course finish Moby Dick which I've already started reading. I talked about it in my March wrap-up, link down below and in the eye, and I have been enjoying it. This is not in any order. Anyways, um, I'll let you know my thoughts when I finish. Then I have a poetry collection, Hera Lindsay Bird by Hera Lindsay Bird. I've owned this collection for a long, long time. I just randomly picked it up at Foils, I think, because it was staff recommended. But it was recently called to my attention because Jane Campbell talked about how funny this collection is. I'm really interested. Also, because I just saw Matthew Sharapa's National Poetry Month PBR and was inspired to pick up some poetry myself, even though I am not in the US. But you know, any reason to pick up more poetry is a good reason. Then I want to reread Cork Dork, A Wine-Fueled Journey into the Art of Sommeliers and the Science of Taste by Bianca Bosker. I read this two years ago? I don't know, it was one of my favorite books I read that year and it's so packed with information but also just interesting and full of personality. It tells the story of how Bosker decides to become a sommelier in spite of at the beginning only being fascinated by people's fascination with wine, like she was not especially interested in wine. Also, she's very interested in knowing if it does something to your brain, to your life, if it's really possible to identify wines with so much accuracy. I really recommend this. I don't know if I'll get to this because it is pretty hefty. Anyways, The Overstory by Richard Powers. This is a campus novel also, I believe. Although the main point I think is about community and ecology and I'm very interested. I've heard nothing but amazing things. Following up on that nature theme, plus building on the National Poetry Month theme, I want to read this Drop Cat Penguin book from cover to cover. This is Leaves of Grass and Selected Poems and Prose by Walt Whitman. I love Walt Whitman. It saddens me that we don't study him here that much. In any case, I have read a lot from this, but I've never read it cover to cover, and I think it might be the time. Also because I just saw the Hampstead Theatre production of uh, I and You, which is a heartbreaking play where Leaves of Grass plays a central role, and that just really motivated me. By the way, when I mean I just saw it, it's because they uploaded it to their Instagram. It was there until the 29th. Then I have this huge Sherlock Holmes book because I have a collection where all of the Sherlock Holmes stories are collected into four volumes, but I am not going to be that ridiculous. The only one that I aspire to read right now is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And finally, I'm very excited to get to this graphic novel called Bowie, Stardust, Rayguns, and Moonage Daydreams by um, Michael Allred, Steve Horton, Laura Allred, and forwarded by Neil Gaiman. I love David Bowie. I don't know if I have shared this before. I think I might have. And I saw this at a bookstore and I could not not get it. The style is gorgeous. Let's, let's just get that and I'm just, I can't wait, I'm so excited! So, when I read in my living room, I usually read sitting on a chair that I have and it looks across to the TV and that shelf where I keep this and I can't tell you how many times I've been about to just left whatever I've been reading to just pick this up but I've restrained myself because I just wanted to read it in one go. So those are the books that I might be picking up in April. My goal is not to get to all of these as much as just have some sort of structure because if not, my mood reading is going to kill me and I won't be finishing anything this month. Hey, Roxy from the future here to address something very stupid but that I really wanted to talk about and then I got so into the Bowie <laughs> graphic novel that I completely forgot. Why am I sitting so far off to one of the sites is because I'm used to leaving a lot of room for the digital pictures. I don't usually have the physical books to show you. Now that I'm in lockdown, of course, all the books are here. I didn't need all the space and I'm going to try and correct that in the next few videos. That's it. 
very stupid. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please give a thumbs up, please subscribe and comment. Have you made a hibernation TBR either on booktube, bookstagram or just to yourself? And if so, what are your main picks? See you next Wednesday with the actual scheduled video. Bye, see you next time.